In this video, we're going to focus on London dispersion forces, which is one of the three kinds of intermolecular forces along with dipole-dipole forces and hydrogen bonding. Remember that all intermole intermolecular forces, or IMFs, are forces of attraction that pull separate molecules together. Okay, so what do we want to do in this video here? We want to talk specifically about the strength of London dispersion forces, LDFs. We want to be able to compare two kinds of molecules and identify which of those molecules experience stronger LDFs, and we want to be able to explain why one kind of molecule will experience stronger LDFs than another. So in order to do that, let's examine two molecules that only experience London dispersion forces. The two molecules we're going to look at today are F2 and Cl2. So F2 and Cl2. Well, if we look at the periodic table, you'll see that fluorine and chlorine, F and Cl, are both very similar to one another. They're both in group 17, so therefore they both have seven valence electrons. And of course, they're right next to each other in group 17. So therefore, the Lewis dot diagram that's gonna result from these molecules is gonna be pretty similar. Both bonded by single bonds, and you'll notice because both the atoms in the bond, or sorry, both the atoms in the molecule are identical, we're not going to have any polar bonds. And because we don't have any polar bonds in the molecule, the molecules will be nonpolar. And as you know, nonpolar molecules only experience London dispersion forces. Well, if that's what's similar about these atoms, what's different? If we look back at the periodic table, we'll see that each fluorine atom because its atomic number is nine, has nine protons and nine electrons. Whereas each chlorine atom has 17 protons and 17 electrons. So just looking at the Bohr diagram for each atom, notice this is a Bohr diagram for the atom, not for the whole molecule. We'll see that chlorine, it's very obvious that chlorine is much larger than fluorine. It's got almost twice the number of protons and electrons as fluorine does. And remember, it's electrons that give an atom its size. So one way we can show this for the molecule is by drawing a, an electron cloud diagram for both fluorine and chlorine. So remember, electron cloud diagrams show the relative location of the electrons in space. And what they also show is that the electrons are zipping all around. Remember, electrons are not stationary. They're in constant motion. So they're zooming all around, and some of the electrons are shared, as we'll see here, but we can see the electron cloud for chlorine, Cl2, is much larger than the electron cloud for F2. Okay, so what does this have to do with London dispersion forces, LDFs? Well, as you may remember, the way nonpolar molecules experience intermolecular forces is when the electrons in the atom, or sorry, in the molecule, zoom more off to one side than the other. So in this case here, the atom on the right just happens to have more electrons around it than the atom on the left. And therefore, what we have is a temporary dipole. Remember, nonpolar molecules can have temporary dipoles if the electrons zoom over to one side. So in this case here, we'd have a temporary dipole pointing to the right, and this atom on the right would have a partial negative charge. Therefore, this would have a partial positive charge. And notice the same thing for this chlorine Cl2 uh, molecule over here. Also, there would be a temporary dipole pointing to the right with a partial negative and a partial positive charge because more of the electrons happen to have zoomed over to this atom on the right here. Now, what's different? Well, you'll notice the electron cloud for the Cl2 molecule is much larger than the electron cloud for the F2 molecule. What this shows is that more electrons can happen to zoom around the atom on the right as compared to the F2 molecule. So therefore, the temporary dipole in this Cl2 molecule is going to be stronger than the temporary dipole in this F2 molecule. So let's write that down here. Temporary dipole is stronger. What I mean by stronger 
is that this partial negative charge will be more negative than this partial negative charge because Cl2 has more electrons. Okay? So, how would this play out? Well, if I, another molecule of F2 were to get near this first molecule of F2, we would experience some LDF, some London dispersion forces, some forces of attraction between these two molecules here. And same thing if another molecule of Cl2 got near this first molecule of Cl2. What I've tried to diagram on these other molecules here is really the strength of the dipoles. So as you'll see, the fluorine has this weaker dipole, and I tried to diagram the Cl2 with a stronger dipole, as you see a bigger arrow here. So essentially, just the force of attraction is going to be stronger here. And just weaker here. So what we're going to have is a weaker force of attraction between the F2, two F2 molecules as compared to the Cl2s because the dipole is stronger in Cl2. Okay. So let's summarize things here. First, what can we say here? Molecules with more electrons are more polarizable. I'm not sure if I've heard the term polarizable in any context except for this one here in chemistry. So I'm assuming it's a made up chemistry word. But what does polarizable mean? It means how polar we're able to make a nonpolar molecule. So how much the electrons are able to zoom out. So if we have more electrons, more of the electrons are able to go on one side of the molecule than the other. And they're able to zoom over there. So it's more polarizable. So it's able to become more polar. All right. So molecules with more electrons are more polarizable. And therefore, they're going to have stronger partial negative and partial positive charges. And they're going to form stronger attractions between separate molecules and form stronger IMFs. In this case, the intermolecular force that's being experienced is London dispersion forces. Okay. So let's uh, examine now some data to see if this plays out in reality. And what we're going to do is look at two molecules, our F2 and Cl2 molecules. Oops. And we're going to look at the boiling point. Remember, when something boils, it goes from liquid phase to gas phase. And so what happens is that the intermolecular forces are completely broken. So we can take a look at the boiling point to see how much energy it takes to completely break apart all the intermolecular forces in the compound. So let's take a look here. For F2, the boiling point is negative 188 degrees Celsius. For Cl2, the boiling point is negative 34 degrees Celsius. So both of these are cold temperatures. But the boiling point for F2 is incredibly cold. Nowhere outside of a laboratory are you going to find temperatures, on Earth at least, of negative 188 degrees Celsius. Whereas 30, negative 34 degrees Celsius, although super cold, you could find that on some places on Earth. So therefore, it doesn't take as much energy to boil F2. It takes a higher temperature. This is a less negative number. So it takes a higher temperature. It takes more energy to break apart all the intermolecular forces in Cl2. Let's go back to our periodic table and see some other elements in group 17 here. Well, another element right below chlorine is bromine. And Br2 can bond very similarly to how F2 and Cl2 bond. And same thing with iodine. And we can get an I2 molecule. Well, the boiling point for Br2 is 59 degrees Celsius, and the boiling point for I2 is 184 degrees Celsius. So what we can see here is as our atoms get larger and larger and larger, in terms of their number of electrons, the boiling point is going to increase. It takes more energy 
to break apart these molecules. Notice, bromine has over twice the number of electrons as chlorine, and iodine has a significantly larger number of electrons than bromine. So what we can say here is, it takes more energy to break I am S. And remember, what's the reason why? As we go from F2 to I2, we have more electrons. So the molecule is more polarizable. Okay, so Hopefully, what we've been able to do in this video here is compare two molecules and identify which experiences the stronger inter, uh, London dispersion forces. And again, it's going to be the molecule with the most electrons. Explain why that kind of molecule will experience stronger LDFs. It's because the more electrons we have, the more polarizable our molecule is, and therefore, the stronger intermolecular forces it will experience.